Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening, we have a first. We have someone on the show that has brought many, many props. Tech Gadget Guy, Brian M. Westbrook. Well, hello. hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. It's been a great week. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of craziness going on, mm -hmm. and uh, it's great to cap up the week here. It's awesome. Okay. We're also joined by We're Brian. happy to see you. Very large, very happy to see Brian's studio audience. I think, I, I, I think they're happy to see you. Oh, <laughs> they have to be happy to see me. Yeah. There was yeah. the one right there. Yeah. So one of them was right. happy to one see of them, me. Yeah. The other ones are happy to see. They've been following you around Portland all week. I, I feel like a little entourage. Like people are here and we're doing this little meetup. And mm -hmm. Anymore, my head's going to oh, Wait, I'm too late. <laughs> <laughs> it fit through the door when you got here. Let's hope it fits let's, through the let's door. Let's see if it gets out. out. That's right. That's right. So primarily what you do is you wander around telling people about technology. That's right. Um, I, I, I tell you a little bit of the story. Uh, I started in 97. Actually, I started before that mm -hmm. doing uh, IT, computers, technology. Uh, in 97, I was listening to a radio station here in town, Z100, mm -hmm. and their morning show producer was going across the country to deliver microbrews to the UPS negotiator with the fantastic idea of settling the UPS strike by delivering these Portland, Oregon microbrews. Mm -hmm. And I had this great idea. Hey, take my, at the time, $1,000 digital camera with you. It took 32 pictures. <laughs> uh, the memory cards for them cost as much as the camera, so if, mm -hmm. you, if you know what I'm talking about. And take it across the country with you, take pictures, and upload them to your website. With the idea that, hey, you know, we could all see what's going on. We could all see kind of the, uh, the, the excitement happening across the country. Well, they loved this idea. They thought, oh, this is great. You know, we're going to take our computer with us. We'll upload them via AOL. I mean, <laughs> high tech here, right? The first day, 1997, the first day they took off across the country, the promotion instructor said to me, well, I don't really know how to post photos to our website. Oh, boy. I ended up inheriting the website and, and sort of doing a lot of things, being paid, paid out of the prize closet, doing it because I enjoyed doing it. It was a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Um, the IT job I had at the bank at the time sort of fizzled out and wasn't really as enjoyable for me. So I ended up taking on building and constructing their website uh, as a full-time gig. Mm -hmm. And that led to become the regional internet director for Clear Channel Communications. So I did that for about three years. Jump ship became the internet director for the Portland Trailblazers, uh, the basketball team here in town, as well as a couple of Paul Allen-owned radio stations in town, mm -hmm. one of them being KXL. Mm -hmm. KXL is a news radio station in town. Uh, it's uh, talk, news in the morning, that sort of thing. And so now I cover technology for them. Anytime there's a tech story or we do a regular weekly piece where we talk about ga uh, gadgets or uh, the Conficker worm is, was a big story this past couple of weeks. That's uh, much nicer the way you say it than the way I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Does the I become another letter? Uh, we um, people we, in Germany are laughing right now. Yes, I'm, they I'm, are. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, they're yeah, th that's for <laughs> sure. But but uh, so I cover technology for them. And about two years ago, I started taking that uh, on a regular basis to television. And uh, what I do on television is much the same thing as I do on the radio program, but talk about the gadgets and really kind of make it simple for everyday people to understand. Um, a lot of the folks watching this show are are probably more advanced than the target demo for mm -hmm. uh, my programs. And what I do is, uh, you know, in San Francisco or in Seattle or in Portland or wherever it is, uh, kind of explain, like, what this is, why you should care, whether you should buy it or not, uh, and really kind of make it simple, make it easy for people to understand. So uh, I've really enjoyed the ability to make things presentable and, mm -hmm. and to explain technology to people in everyday language that maybe they aren't comfortable with this or they don't have any idea what that does or you know whether it be the new netbooks or the e-readers or what digital camera to buy. So really mm -hmm. kind of trying to help them out and be their advocate, uh, a technologist if you will, mm -hmm. uh, for the everyday, you know, for your mother for example mm -hmm. um, is a, an example I use often. So Very nice. Well, do you want to tell us about some of the stuff that you brought in today? Yeah, I brought, I brought a number of things in. Okay. And um, the first thing I'll show you, these are a lot of fun. I know our audience loves these. Uh, these are high definition video cameras. And it's interesting that it used to be a high definition video camera was super large and, and it took a lot of money and a lot of resources to have an HD camera. Uh, there are two here, get back to the mic here. There are two here. This is the Flip Minnow HD. This is a high definition version of their video camera. And what I really like about this camera is you can just pop open the USB port 
and you can transfer your pictures right there via this the USB connection so it goes right into your computer. Um, it's pretty slick, it's super portable. Slip it in your shirt pocket. Just press one button on the front to start recording and another button to stop recording. Mm -hmm. So it's great and, and this is an example of you know, one of many, I've brought a lot of sort of small gadgets with me today. Uh, things that are getting smaller and smaller. They're just putting technology yeah. and, and things that, remember that $1,000 digital camera I told you about? Mm -hmm. uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't even touch this. No. There are wristwatches that will do, in fact, we'll take a look at a camera in a minute that does more than that camera could even think of doing and has more memory, more capabilities. Um, so this is the Flip Minnow HD. Um, this is a similar version by Creative. This is the Creative Vado HD. And this is a nice camera as well. Again, the push one button to start. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can take a little bit tighter shot if you want, that sort of thing. Uh, and it's great. This one has an HDMI port built into it, so you can plug it right into your TV to watch, uh, watch pictures and that sort of thing. So that's kind of where the video cameras are going. Um, there are also a lot of fun new digital still cameras that are coming out these days. And I brought two with me. This one I'm super excited about. And I've, I've been a huge fan of uh, digital cameras for some time. I mean, it sort of started me on this journey, if you will, in broadcasting. Uh, but the Casio Exelum here, this one actually does 1,000 frames per second video. Wow. So you think, well, why do I need 1,000 frames per second? You can't actually see that many. But you imagine if you're doing a soccer play, if you're doing something like that, you could slow it down into super slow motion and catch exactly that frame that you're looking mm -hmm. for. It'll also do a little neat thing when, if you want to take a picture, you can take a picture, you push the shutter button, it's actually recorded three or four frames before you push the shutter button. So if you miss Very that nice. one moment, you can go back in time. Because you always get the photo that's this. Exactly, it's like, yeah. eyes closed, you know, the eyes closed, or, mouth, or, or yeah. right after that, you know, like imagine mm -hmm. that you're at a, your son's softball game, for example, you swing the bat, it hits the ball, that's the shot you want, but mm -hmm. the shot you got is, you know, him halfway to first base. Yeah. So it's nice that you can be able to take that picture, and they're really using different things. It's also got the anti-shake, anti so that you can get a nice, clean, crisp shot with that as well. Um, this camera, by this is by Casio, the Casio Exelum EXFC100, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of model numbers in my head if they all sound, <laughs> start to sound confusing. This one is kind of fun. Uh, this is an Olympus camera. It makes fun noises. It's a Stylus 1050SW, and uh, it has a, a fun little feature in it in that you can actually take this camera, and if we could turn the monitor around here so I can see it real quick. You can take this camera, yeah. and uh, what you can do with it is kind of fun. You can actually tap the camera when you want to operate. So you can push the button, it'll move one way. You can push the button, it'll move another way. And it's kind of slick because I can tap on it and it'll say like, okay, here's this mode. If you want to adjust a flash, you tap here once, you scroll through the different modes. When you find what you want, you just tap on the top. Now you're thinking, well, that's kind of nice, but I can push the buttons. What if you have ski gloves on? You cannot push buttons. So this camera buttons. is a nice ability to be able to scroll through the different modes. You can turn the flash on. You can review the photos just by pushing one button there. And then as you go through the different modes, here I'm adjusting the shadow. I can press double click to press OK. And I can tap on the side. And then when I'm in review mode, I can scroll through the pictures as well just by tapping on the left, tapping on the right, and then confirming up above. It also has a super large, if we can look here, it has a super large view of the, uh, the shutter so that you can actually take a picture with it. But let me show you my favorite feature of this. I'm gonna actually disconnect the camera here for a second so if we can switch over to camera two, there we go. And uh, if I'll make sure it's just tight here, maybe do a little bit of checking here. Um, I can actually drop it into water. Oh. oh. Dr. Normal missed the shot on that one. So this is, well, let's just do it again then. <laughs> let's just do it again. Let's do it. It's much more dramatic to actually see it go in. <laughs> We're actually just going to, we'll just start this over. Now, now you did unplug that before you, uh, <laughs> from my board, right? Yeah, before yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sending electric shock waves through the board yeah. right now. If you don't mind, that's all right, right? Uh, so I can actually take a picture, like so. And then what wow, I can do right. is I can actually take the camera and, you know, let's say you're, you're at a pool, you're wherever, you want to take some pictures underwater, you can actually just drop the camera right into the water. And this, by the way, is a really fun bar trick because people think, you know, you're dropping your camera into water and they're all crazy, they're freaking out, they're like, what are you doing? Ah, oh, it's a really expensive camera. No, it's actually meant to be waterproof, so you can lock it up, you can take it oh, in the water with it you. Lift it up and turn can, it around there, you can the, actually, yeah, you yeah, can actually the, see And it's here. still on. It's still on and... <laughs> taking video or something 
And you can actually take it down underwater with you if you're swimming. This is great for the beach, great mm -hmm. to go out with the kids. Uh, you know, if you, you don't have to worry about falling into a water puddle or something because it's waterproof. So it's a nice uh, nice camera for that option. I will say the this Olympus camera is a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take the world's fastest picture, so sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to with that. Uh, but it's kind of fun. I want to show you one more camera, okay. and then we'll get on for a little bit, and then we'll come back. Let's... We'll come back to the gadgets. This is a lot of fun, and you saw this when I was on the Square Live at 7 on KGW, and this is a pen camera. Uh, producer Aaron, who's been on the show before, had a lot of fun with I this. I suddenly feel like I should be on Get Smart. This is a, uh, this is a <laughs> pen, uh, and, and that's all it is. Okay, it's just a pen. No, it's a, it's a pen. It actually does write. People ask me that all the time. Uh, but it's recording now. You can see there's a little bitty lens in there. And on the back of it is a blue light. The blue light indicates, you can see there in the camera, the blue light indicates that it's recording. So it's actually recording us right now, video and audio, wave. And then when you're ready to upload the pictures, you just take this little here, you just unscrew that. And there you go, there's your nice. USB connection. So you I plug it right into your computer it right like there. It was big enough to have a USB in it. But Absolutely. So it's nice. kind of fun. It, you know, not the world's greatest quality video, but it's super portable. And remember I was telling you about that camera that got me my first job? Mm -hmm. This pen. We'll do more than that. Yeah. It's funny how technology has come and how much smaller things have become. Yeah. Oh, I think we've now covered cameras. Cameras. We've got cameras that do amazing things. We've got cameras that go underwater, and we've got pin so which, camera. Which one is? Uh, I'm going to be a secret agent. I mean, you showed us a lot of cameras. I mean, what's your favorite? <clears throat> what's your favorite out of the bunch? I, I think the, um, to answer that question, I'll tell you uh, sort of what I take with me, because that's kind of the, the true test, is what am I willing to travel with? Um, right now, I travel with this camera. This is the ca the new Casio. It comes out in uh, May, and uh, it's nice because it's a pocket camera. It's not as small as my last Casio, but it's nice because you always have it with you. And my personal thought is if you always have a camera with you, you're likely to get the shot. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the camera with you, you know, all the fancy technology in the world, you could have a huge digital SLR, and, and I have one. Um, but if I don't have it with me, if it's not out and available and accessible, the moment's gone. Yeah. Uh, so having a nice camera is great. Uh, having a, a, a fancy digital SLR is great. But unless you've always got it on your shoulder, uh, if, unless you always have it with you ready to take that picture, you're going to miss the shot. Yeah. So sometimes you're out with friends, you're out and about, uh, you know, you're a busy family. You don't have time to set up the digital SLR, put the lenses on it, figure out what you're doing. Uh, you might be better off with just a quick point and shoot. In fact, I know a lot of professional photographers that, yes, they have, you know, cameras that do amazing things but sometimes you just need a point and shoot um, I would say this right now is probably the one camera of the lot that if you ask me I would have with me uh, I've actually in really enjoyed working with the flip minnow because mm -hmm. it takes great audio uh, the flip minnow HD that we looked at earlier so I can use that as a video camera but also if I need to uh, if I'm in a pinch and I need to get some audio off of it for the radio show I can just pull that right off of the flip the video track and just take the audio off of that so those are probably the two that I would I would say I'd carry with me Outside of the um, the tech aspect, um, what do you think about Cisco's announcement that they're uh, acquiring uh, the Flip company? You know, I, I think it's good for Flip. We should probably say, for those who don't know who Cisco Systems is. <laughs> yeah, and, and Cisco Systems is a, a large player in the networking space. So they make uh, big routers and, and equipment for a lot of enterprise customers. You know, if you went into a Microsoft or a Boeing, they would have a lot of racks and racks of Cisco gear that, that make their computers talk to each other. It's the back end of the Internet, basically. Uh, in a lot of respects, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and not just at enterprises, but certainly Internet service providers and on down the line. And they um, own uh, Linksys, so mm -hmm. those people who have Linksys wireless routers and things in their home, that's actually a Cisco product They now. did buy They did buy Linksys, mm -hmm. uh, what, a couple of years ago. I think it was maybe yeah. two, two and a half years ago. And they've also started to do, at the Consumer Electronics Show, which I go to every year, it's a big geek fest for gadgets, really, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of work, but it's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Uh, they showed off one of their new products, the Linksys at Home uh, product, and that allows you to wirelessly connect your, your home audio systems together. And a couple of other play people have done that before. Sonos has done that. Uh, but it's interesting to see Cisco get in, in that space primarily because it tells me they're really trying to make a consumer play. Mm -hmm. Their acquisition of Linksys, their new products, and now with the pure digital flip camera line that they've purchased, uh, I see Cisco looking toward consumers as really being kind of their next way to go, their next avenue. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. Uh, I, I'm personally, I think it's going to be great for flip, assuming they actually give it some energy to yeah. momentum to go and not just sort of squander and squash it. But we'll see what happens. Very cool. 
So did we want to move on to some more gadgets? Because he's more got gadgets. more and there's more. There's more. There's stuff but here wait, to look at. But wait, there's more. Um, so if we could grab the, the board over here, I want to show you. This next gadget is really kind of a, a fun one. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier kind of on the theme of bringing things smaller and smaller. This is actually a projector. It's by 3M. And now this, this one, is one of my favorites this that you is, brought. This is a $350 gadget. Um, but what's slick about this is it fits into your pocket. Uh, the only cable I have connected actually gives us the video signal. But if you see right, right here on the screen, we can actually watch the broadcast on the back. You know, we're just using a little monitor here. From the palm of my hand, I've got this, this pocket projector. Now, you're not going to go super large with it. You're not going to go super bright. But again, if you've got it with you, you're likely to use it. Uh, it's also slick. You could plug this into your, you know, your, your mobile phone. You could mm -hmm. show off photos. You could do a little slideshow. Uh, it also will connect to your computer if you're doing a presentation with a couple of folks. Um, you won't necessarily, uh, say, bring this to the next Ignite event and show everyone in the audience, but you could, you know, you can make a reasonably sized picture, even in this well-lit studio. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. the studio's pretty well-lit, and I can still, and I think people at home can can see, can make you guys out. We're looking at the live program feed right now, um, and that's not even a pure white background that's no, a canvas a, that's the back of our, so uh, our guests that's pretty impressive <laughs> especially if you're yeah if you're traveling and you know with your laptop and so can you can you hook this into a dvd player or something absolutely there'd yeah. be no reason you couldn't i was actually on a flight a, a couple of weeks ago and just because i could i plugged this into my iphone and i played a movie on my tray table on the back of my tray Very table nice. So I have now my own in-flight theater yeah. uh, as I'm as I'm flying to uh, to Vegas. But uh, of course, it'd be better if my you know if I weren't bouncing it up and down. But um, you kind of get the idea. So this is uh, they're starting to build projectors into cell phones. They're starting to build them into you know right into the DVD players. You've got a portable DVD device and you've got a, a laptop. Projector built in there. But this Having is purely a, be awesome. a, a portable projector. That's what it does. That's, That's its what it function does. and its form. And unfortunately, a lot you know the number one question I get about this device is does it have any sort of can you play photos? Can you play video images off of it? The answer is no, unfortunately. Um, but it is sort of a, an indication of what's coming. It's an indication of, you know, coming soon we'll have devices with this built into it. Maybe you slap a micro SD card into there. You can do a slideshow. You can play mm -hmm. your PowerPoint presentation, uh, keynote, whatever you want. So the idea being that they'll become more useful tools as time goes on. I'm also hoping and looking forward to the day when they become brighter as well yeah. and right for right now they're they're just simply not bright enough to be used in in everyday use um but you know in a pinch if you need one you, this is a good option so and again it's 350 dollars. so you know if you're somewhere where you need to pay a high rental charge or you just want to do an ad hoc presentation yeah. i think it's a great alternative or if you just it, like so, to have your own little pocket projector so, so the mean, bulb it's nice the bulb in that projector is a uh, is a uh, LCD, is that correct? It's or, uh, an LED, it's I'm sorry. LED, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's an LED projector. Okay. Uh, and, and one of the unfortunate things about these projectors, it's good you ask, Dr. Normal, is um, you actually can't replace it. Ooh. So when the, when, the, when, the, oh. when the LED light goes out, game over. But, but how long does it last? It, it actually lasts, uh, I don't remember how long it lasts. But LEDs I, last I, for a pretty long time. It does, time. I mean, that's the good news is, uh, unlike the traditional LCD projectors where the bulb burns out and they're super expensive to replace, I mean, again, it's $350, and on a traditional projector, you can spend that much for a bulb. Correct. Exactly. So, we, I know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've, <laughs> there you go. We've unfortunately had to replace a projector bulb before. <laughs> right? It's not fun. And it's 300, <laughs> pop, 300 a pop. Yeah. So. The um an another gadget I brought uh, this this is, this, this is really kind of see. fun yeah. um and I'll give this to you to, to play with here in a second but this is the Amazon Kindle and this is the new ebook reader it's three hundred sixty dollars by Amazon uh, it's the Kindle two and it actually will allow you to download books directly to it it has a built-in wireless connection which you don't pay for so you mm -hmm. don't pay a subscription you don't pay a ten twenty dollars a month the price of the, the the delivery is built right into the book. Books range anywhere from five dollars to ten dollars. You can get magazines and newspaper subscriptions anywhere from seventy five cents. Usually they're a couple bucks. You can also download blog content from certain blogs. But what I like about this, we'll just pull up Neil Gaiman's uh, Coraline here. It's a favorite book, and then I'm going to go into the menu option here, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to start this up, and we're actually going to plug this in so everyone can hear at home. Uh, and I'm going to go and actually just start the text to speech mode. So this book will actually now read to you. There we go. Oh, 
She sat up in bed. <laughs> Something went creepy on Coraline got out of bed and looked down the hall, but saw nothing strange. She walked down the hall from her parents. Bedroom. I'm going to have nightmares. No, no, wasn't this um, the, uh, essentially uh, the publishers who are publishing audiobooks were having a, a problem with the fact that it was doing um, reading uh, and this would cut into audiobooks. So can you tell us a little bit about that controversy? Uh, absolutely. And the, and the short version of it, and we can plot this down, the short version of this is uh, the publishers were having a hard time with that, uh, saying, you know, you're kind of taking into our audiobook margin. And so Amazon caved a bit uh, and they actually gave folks the ability to disable that option so if as a publisher you don't want folks to be able to set the text to speed and to be able to read read your book you can disable that so when the book is downloaded to your kindle 2 uh, it won't read it back to you um, I, I personally I, I can see both sides of the argument it's a little unfortunate because i think it'd be great if you could read anything uh, but it also seems like a lot of the publishers are sort of recognizing that this is the way to go and they're leaving it alone. They're letting people to be able to read the book. So, What kind of screen is on that again? This is what's called an e-ink screen. And uh, one of the neat things about the e-ink screen is it'll draw the screen and it'll, it'll leave it set. So it'll, you'll actually put the screen on and it won't consume any additional battery life while the screen is on. It has 16 shades of gray. It's an 800 by 600 screen. Uh, and what's nice about this is it's actually pleasing to the eye. It's mm -hmm. unlike a traditional LCD screen, like on your laptop, for example, where it's super bright and it's kind of hard to read. And it's flat. This allows you to this allows you to actually read it, and you can read it over long periods of time. So this is no backlight. There's no backlight exactly. So you do need, like a traditional book, you would actually need light to be able to read. Hmm. That is very cool. You want to play? Yes, I do want to play. Give it back. That's We've now fun. lost Cami Chaos. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, mm. from from this point on, the part of Cami Chaos and the the part will be of read Ryan by an ebook on the Kindle too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I've said some like, oh, why would you want to do that? I need a book, but <laughs> hello. It's this a little big nice. though. Um, the this iPhone. This is not big. Have you seen the books I lug around when I'm trying to read? Yeah, this is true. I think I, I think I'm, that's more. Um, you know, for education. You remember, you know, you're in college and you're carrying around the big giant book bag. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where I think that's that's really the, the key key piece, you know, is to be able to to have all those books in the Kindle. And the iPhone has an application too. Absolutely, have... this is this is the Kindle iPhone app here. There's also a lot of added value in the ability to carry a bunch of textbooks with you and mm -hmm. to be able to walk around and, and take things to go. Uh, you can haul an entire book bag full of, of textbooks without having to you know lug around those big heavy books so there's a big stick initiative it in your purse or exactly your, yeah and so this is the this is the kindle iphone app and you see i've got the book loaded on here and then when i want to scroll through different pages when i want to scroll through different pages i can just sort of flick through and it'll go one page to the next page uh, and it'll actually show the pictures and everything you need right there so it'll just scroll through the book, very similar to you to what you would do on the Kindle too, but built into the <laughs> iPhone format. And any book that you have in your any book that you have in your Kindle too will also load here to the iPhone as well. So it's great that you don't have to replicate your collection between the Kindle too and the iPhone as well. I have to say, can we show the not just the I mean the the pictures, the illustrations look amazing. So there's a there's a, this is a picture. This is again from Coraline. And it's got a uh, it's got an illustration there, and it'll actually do that. It's got a dictionary built into it. You can see full editions of the New York Times, uh, Time Magazine is on there. A lot of the major newspapers are on there, USA Today, uh, and of course you can download books from the Amazon Kindle Library. And this is what sets this apart from some of the other devices. Um, I'll go back to the home screen here. That's what set what sets this apart from some of the other devices is you can buy content directly on the book. Whereas the Sony e-readers, for example, you have to load it onto your PC and then transfer it over. It has built-in kind of wireless. This has a built-in wireless. It's a 3G connection similar to what would be on your iPhone. It's actually running over the Sprint network, but the ability to be able to um, to flip through that content is nice because then you can buy it right on the, on the Kindle 2, have it sent directly to you in the background so it'll let you know when it's ready. So let me ask, how many books does it hold? It holds 1,500 books. Uh, and well, that kind of invalidates my next question, but okay. <laughs> okay, well, what, 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 uh, your next question was going to be how long does the battery last? It'll mm. last two weeks no. if, it's, if the wireless is not on. Well, it should be. That was another question, but that was not my next question. It lasts two weeks if the battery... Two weeks if the wireless is turned off, four mm -hmm. to five days if the wireless is turned on. Very cool. What was your next question? My, what I was thinking was, is uh, you know, to use a Wii as an example, if you download a game for the Wii, mm -hmm. uh, once you purchase that game, even if you wipe it off of your Wii 
there's a record mm-hmm. that you own it and they'll let you download it again for free. My my question was, what if you run out of room for books? But It'll actually store those books on your Amazon account and okay. you can pick and choose which ones. Similar to songs in okay. your iTunes library. Perfect. Yeah, very, absolutely. very nice. Mm-hmm. It's kind okay. of a fun device. I've actually just started playing with this a little bit and uh, it's kind of addicting. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that, like, do I really have to send this back? Yeah, Dr. Normal's going to be in trouble come Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I have a feeling I'll never be invited back after uh, <laughs> after we see Kemi Chaos's Christmas list. Right? Oh no, we enjoy this. We... Um, we're running low on time, but you have one more thing over there. Just real quick, this is um, you know sort of I, I, when I was thinking about things to bring into the show today, I thought, well, what are really kind of the fun things over the last couple of years? This is an innovative use of technology. This here is a spot personal tracker, and it's a waterproof device. Uh, you would think normally, okay, great, it's a GPS tracker. It keeps track of where we are. Ho hum, who cares? But what's neat about this is you point it to the sky and it's a GPS tracking device that communicates up to the satellites Mm -hmm. without requiring a cell phone connection. And that's the important thing. If you're a hiker, you're a backpacker, you're a frequent traveler, you've got this spot personal tracker with you Mm -hmm. and you don't need a cellular connection. So if you're out somewhere where you don't get cell phone service, uh, you're out in the mountains, you're hiking, you're on a backcountry road that doesn't have cell phone service, this could actually save your life. How heavy is it? You push a button. You push a button, you push the 911 button, hold it for a couple of seconds, it'll actually communicate to a central 911 dispatch with your GPS coordinates, say, somebody at this location is in trouble, send the National Guard, send the emergency I, services. I think we don't want to test that right now, Cammie. No, no, I didn't push any buttons. <laughs> this is this is my whole thing, and maybe it's you know a product of watching all of the rescues mm-hmm. um, on Mount Hood every year, and, and I really think if you're going to go into a dangerous area, you should be required to carry one of those. And there are other devices. There are or, more, I mean, not necessarily that specific. There answer. are more There are more localized beacon type devices mm-hmm. that will pump out a radio signal, but you have to be yeah. listening for that. Yeah. This could work anywhere you are. It works in almost every country. So the ability then to send a message that says, you can send a message that says, I'm okay. It'll go to your friends and family via email or text messaging. You can also send a message that says, panic, panic, panic. I'm in trouble. I yeah. need help. And it'll send the emergency services. So again, it could save your life. It's 150 bucks for the device. I think it's 100 bucks now and $100 a year. But if you do enough traveling or you have loved ones that you're really worried about, it's a great way to keep them safe. Fantastic. Well, Brian, um, before we go, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you. Well, I blog uh, at tech.brianwestbrook.com. Uh, I'm also on KXL every week. Uh, I also do regular appearances on KGW. I was on live at 7 uh, earlier this week, for example. Um, and I also am on Twitter, which is fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I have uh, probably one of the best Twitter names in the you room, do. I think. You do. Uh, simply my initials. Uh, my name is Brian M. Westbrook, so my Twitter name is BMW. Uh, and yes, uh, I do drive a BMW. Just get that out there <laughs> people already always ask they're like oh i'm glad you're a bmw fan well it's kind of my initials but i do happen to drive one as well so bmw on twitter it's a good place All to right. find me fantastic thank you so much for joining us if you need more time with brian you can join us for after hours up next see y'all later good night everybody <laughs>